This is a run capacitor. Do y'all see anything that's physically different about it? This is a okay. This is a plastic type case. This is a metal case. Inside there is paste inside of this particular capacitor, star capacitor. Microfarads in relation to the run capacitor are going to be higher than the star capacitor. This stays in the circuit for a very short time. Within seconds it needs to come out of the circuit. Okay, electrically disconnected. The reason being is the heat that's produced in here. A lot of heat in a short time. The run capacitor has got uh, electrolyte in it that's more liquid. Okay? You, they used to be oil filled. They're not oil filled anymore. There's uh, uh, actually uh, it's a glycerin based uh, electrolyte now. Anyway, these are smaller in the microfarad ratings, but the shell helps to dissipate the heat. That's the reason you see the, the metal shell that helps to keep it cool. These stay in the circuit while the motor's running. What's the purpose of the canteen shape on it? Uh, it, it can come in different shapes. That just happens to be the way they do it. In fact, here's a capacitor that's round. This is one that can be used for multiple applications. This is a run capacitor with a bleed resistor. That has another purpose too. We'll get into that a little deeper. You see something though? They're not always, good point, they don't always look the same, but they are the same device. The ratings are going to be in microfarads and the maximum voltage. And like I say, we'll, we'll go a little deeper into that, but I can tell you this right now. Don't ever see the, the maximum voltage. Yeah. Okay. Does the size really matter? I mean, the size of the capacitor, the microfarads, yes it does. It has to match the motor. Okay. All right. That's part of the run and starting components of a motor. Well, I've said that the start capacitor cannot stay in the circuit for just a short amount of time. Well, we've got to have something that can take it out of the circuit after the motor starts up. Y'all remember us talking about a centrifugal switch? Okay. Centrifugal switches are great for certain applications, but you wouldn't want a centrifugal switch inside a compressor. Why? You don't want to have a spark inside the the, the uh, where the refrigerant and the oil is. So we got to come up with a remote way of removing the start winding or the start capacitor which would be in the start winding. A couple of ways that we can do that. These are current relays. This is a potential relay. We also have a hot wire relay down here at the bottom. Okay. This is a, this actually looks similar to a hot wire relay, but it's not. This is a current relay here, built into a box. So just because it looks like something may not be what it is. So y'all keep that in mind. You've got to know what the component actually is. Let's talk about the current relay to start off with. The current relay, I'm going to flip this back up just a moment. I've got this one taken apart. This is a set of contacts that's in here. The orientation of this is very important because it depends upon gravity to let the contact fall back down when it should. And when I say that, let me show you how it works. If I have the motor, and this is going to be my run winding, common, and my start, I'm going to have a set of contacts like so, this is a current relay. This plunger has got a coil of wire around it and comes back over here. We're going to say this is L1. This is going to the neutral. Okay, remember inrush currents? Inrush, when it first starts up, comes through here, the magnetic force becomes great, pulls this contact closed, energizes the start winding as soon as that inrush current drops. This drops down, decreases, the, or, or stops the current going to the start winding. Okay. 
Y'all see a limitation here? How big does this wire got to be on this coil? Depends on the application. For small amperages, the size of this wire is going to be relatively small. What if this is a large motor? Heavy gauge. You're going to have a big device there. So it's a limitation. You see your wire right here? Okay. The size of that wire has got to be able to handle the run current. So you can see on a larger motor, this, this is not practical. Okay, because we know that space, space uh, costs money, right? I mean, really, it does. You know, when you when you start looking at if, you, if a small refrigerator took up uh, half the kitchen, that'd be a problem, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially in my kitchen. Mm -hmm. I, I, we have an understanding at my house. I don't cook very well, so if I cook something, don't eat. <laughs> so I'm off limits in the kitchen, okay? <laughs> All right. So how do we overcome that? Well, we got to have a different type of relay. We're going to use what's called a potential relay. A potential relay uses what's called a back EMF, which is uh, back electromotive force is what that stands for, from the start line. All right, I'm going to try to draw a motor winding, and this is my start, that's my run, this is my comma. The, the number of windings in my start are going to outnumber the number of windings, or turns, I should say, not windings, the number of turns of wire in the start winding are going to outnumber the number of turns in the run winding. Y'all remember how transformers work? Okay, this works something what like a transformer. It actually generates, the run winding as it runs, actually generates a back EML voltage that's higher than the voltage coming into the motor. Okay, the faster it turns, the higher the voltage. That has to do like a generator effect, okay? Combination, combination turn to turn ratio, combination how fast is the motor running? Well, with those two characteristics, we can tell the start winding when to disengage. How do we do that? All right, what we're gonna have, and we're gonna measure that back EMF across the start winding, okay? This is going to be my start relay. I let that start relay control a normally closed set of contacts. Y'all remember the current relay had normally open. Now we have uh, a normally closed contact. This is my start relay contacts that is connected to the power going to the start winding, okay? So what happens when this back EMF becomes large enough, voltage becomes large enough, it opens a set of contacts. And that's going to happen when this motor reaches around 75% of its speed. Okay. We can't just put any starting device on any motor. They've got to match. All right? You don't have the right component match, you take a chance of running this motor. All right? That makes sense? Okay, well, what do they look like? That's the potential relay. Here's your coil on the potential relay. Notice the size of the wire on the coil. Much smaller. It's not measuring a lot of current. It's measuring voltage. Okay. What it does is move that set of contacts and opens them up when the voltage gets right. Okay. Now, the hot wire relay is almost a mystery to us. Now, it is a very complicated device to troubleshoot, whereas the other two rel relays are very easy to troubleshoot. Okay, I didn't say this, but we can measure the coil, the resistance of the coil to see if it's good. We can measure the contacts on a current relay to see if they're open when they're 
de-energized. In fact, if you have this loose, you 